Hey guys, happy doo -doo -doo -doo. Monday. It is Monday. And I am here to read your daily meditations. Oh, this lighting is just, guys, you don't even know. I'm trying, you're like teetering on a plant, a book, and a drawer that I pulled out from the sewing table. And now the lighting is just, my whole face isn't in it. Let me move over a little bit. Okay. I was sitting on the floor, but my feet fall asleep when I sit on the floor, so I'm trying to be more comfortable. Okay, guys. Here I am. This is just the best it's going to be for now. Next time, I'll try to make it a little better. But, um, all right. We are doing Just for Today by Narcotics Anonymous, coupled with The Language of Letting Go by Melanie Beatty. These are my two faves. And then we have a little bonus reading at the end that I've been throwing in that I love. Okay, so let's start with just for today, uh, February 7th, that is page 39, and the title of today's reading is, This is Not a Test. I think. Some of us come into recovery with the impression that life's hardships are a series of cosmic tests designed to teach us something. This belief is readily apparent when something traumatic happens and we wail, my higher power is testing me. We're convinced that it is a test of our recovery when someone offers us drugs or a test of our character when faced with a situation where we could go do something unprincipled without getting caught. We may even think it's a test of our faith when we're in great pain or tragedy in our lives. But a loving higher power doesn't test our recovery, our character, or our faith. Life just happens, and sometimes it hurts. Many of us have, lo have lost love through no fault of our own. Some of us have lost all of our material wealth. A few of us have even grieved the loss of our own children. Oh, I couldn't imagine. Life can be terribly painful at times, but the pain is not inflicted on us by our higher power. Rather, that power is constantly by our sides, ready to carry us if we can't walk by ourselves. There is no harm that life can do us that the God of our understanding can't heal. Just for today, I will have faith that my higher power's will for me is good and that I am loved. I will seek my higher power's help in time of need. I love that reading. I really love that reading. And I try not to talk too much about religion because for obvious reasons, like you're just not supposed to you bang heads. People are so set in their ways when it comes to things like that. And, um, I don't want to offend anybody. So I really try to stay away from that. But, um, this reading, you know, sparked something and it reminded me and I need to speak about it. Um, I am born again Christian. I believe in God, Jesus. I am saved, all that, just so you know, just a little background. And a lot of times people um, that aren't totally religious or who don't believe in God, that is a big thing that they say. Well, if God can do anything, then why does he let people suffer? Why does he let kids suffer? Why does he let people have cancer and all that kind of stuff? And what we learn through reading the Word of God is this is a world of sin. The devil roams this earth and he rules it. There's sin everywhere. And when we are born, we are born into a world of sin. Um, and it's not a test when something happens. It is life. And you ha as long as you have faith and you read the Word of God, you will have your higher power there to walk you through it. Um, sadly, it's that's just the way it is. Earth has sin and it has bad things. And a lot of people don't understand that. It's very hard to understand. And um, of course, nobody wants kids to suffer, especially. And that's just, you know, I've come to terms with that. I used to be that way too. I used to be really angry and not understand until I sought out the answer and did my research and 
sadly, that's just the world that we live in. Um, so yeah, that's what reminds me. That's, that's what I got out of this reading. Um, but once you flip your way of thinking up, cause you know, when you think, oh, this is a test. Another huge one that I hear a lot of people say all the time is, oh, God punished you. I told you not to do that. You did it anyway. God punished you. No, God doesn't punish you. That's not how he works. That doesn't happen that way. Um, I don't know where people get that, those sayings from, but that's not true. So, yeah, I mean, build up your faith and you will have your higher power to walk you through those hard times. And um, I thank my Lord for being by my side. So now we're going to go over to the language of letting go. And we are February, uh, February 7th, right? Yeah. February 7th. Do, 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 do. Okay, guys. February 7th, owning our power. We need to make a distinction between powerlessness and owning our power. The first step in recovery is accepting powerlessness. There are some things we can't do no matter how long or how hard we try. These things include changing other people, solving their problems, and controlling their behavior. Sometimes we feel powerless over ourselves. What we feel or believe or the effects of a particular situation or person on us. It's important to surrender to powerlessness, but it's equally important to own our power. We aren't trapped, we aren't helpless. Sometimes it may feel like we are, but we aren't. We each have the God-given power and the right to take care of ourselves in any circumstance and with any person. The middle ground of self-care lies between the two extremes of controlling others and allowing them to control us. Mm. We can walk that ground gently or assertively, but in confidence that it is our own right and responsibility. Let the power come to walk that path. Today, I will remember that I can take care of myself. I have choices and I can exercise the options I choose without guilt. Thank you for that reading. I like that reading. That is something that, oh, that's another thing. Especially us women, we think, oh, we got a man. Yeah, he's there's like two or three thousand red flags. But I can change him. I can show him love. I can show him. Mm -mm. I don't know how many times I've said that and failed. Can't change somebody. They have to change their self. So, all right, guys. Here's our bonus reading. 365 days of kindness. And today... Everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. It's little surprises that even the Apostle Paul knew that everyone typically looks out for themselves. This is not something to be ashamed of. Rather, it's something to be aware of. When you're considering whether to accept an invitation to a gathering or to give a little extra for missions or to go the extra mile and volunteer at church, stop for a moment and think about what you're, what are you protecting the most? Are you worried about losing your time or some of your hard earned savings? Again, it's not wrong to think about yourself, but try to consider your interest and if you can serve Jesus by letting go of some of those things for the sake of someone else. Today's act of kindness is a little bit of a challenge. Clean someone's house. Okay. Okay. That would be a nice gesture. That'd be a nice way of giving back. Let me know how many people cleaned someone's house today for them down below in the comments. Guys, that's going to do it for today. February 7th. Monday, February 7th. Um, thanks for joining me here today. Once again, I apologize for this lighting, this setup, this monstrosity. Um, I'm still learning. Uh, my channel is still very new. But um, please subscribe. Click that bell. 
join me on this crazy journey. And um, yeah, guys, today's a good day for a good day. I'll see you here again tomorrow. Bye.